Okay, this morning, Caribbean Today is pleased to introduce David Mullings, who is chairman and CEO of his company, Blue Maho Capital Partners, Inc., private investment firm. He's going to be talking with us today about his firm's mission to encourage the Jamaican diaspora, as well as international investors, to invest in Jamaica and in an effort to develop economic growth and prosperity in the region. Okay, thank you for being with us today, Mr. Mullings. Thank you for having me. I look forward to it. <laughs> okay, it's our absolute pleasure. All right, so I understand your entrepreneurship journey started at age 15, right? Yes. And at that very young age, you mapped out a 15 year plan to become a positive role model for young people around the world. So, how do you think you're doing so far? Well, I know that I'm doing great. So the idea was, I knew what I wanted to do after age 50, and I needed a way to get there. And I wrote a 15-year plan when I finished high school. So I finished fifth form at 15. I'm born January 81. So I started the September before. And that was a 15-year plan broken the blocks of five years with one deal. Whoever I got married to couldn't change the plan to age 30, but they would be allowed to help me write the plan from 30 to 50. So we did a 20-year plan. Okay growing to blocks of fibers that wouldn't be as strict as the first 15. And so at this point in time, like literally last night, I was working on a document that had from age 39 to 45 and had some okay. very specific things that I had to do. And so I was making some slight changes to dates, but there are 54 steps that are critical steps that I need to accomplish. I'm 43 years old now, and I think I'll mm -hmm. get by the time I hit 45. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it seems like you've got way ahead of yourself, you know? <laughs> All right. Now tell us about your educational background. You were educated at UM and you graduated with a bachelor's and then an MBA with a concentration in marketing and international business. Did I get that right? You got that right. I think we okay. don't want to leave out the Jamaica side or Caribbean education, as you know, is so important and so different. So Started at Mona Preparatory School in Jamaica. Uh, my dad's yeah. aunt actually taught me, uh, Jean Mullings. Mm -hmm. Graduated from there, went to Campion College, and then finished Campion fifth form at the age of 15, and then went straight to to actually start at Broward Community College, now Broward College in South Florida. Uh, did yeah. a postage degree there. Graduated at 17 and got a scholarship to University of Miami for the last two years. So I finished undergrad at University of Miami. Graduated at 19 years old with a bachelor's of science. My goodness. Yeah. And then went back home to play football. I went back to Jamaica to play football for Real Mona. So I played yes. in the second and third division. And, and that's actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to go pro while going down that business path. And came okay. back after a year to do my MBA. University of Miami offered me a half tuition scholarship for the first year of a two-year MBA. Okay. I, I asked them if I could defer for a year and they said, yeah, 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 just apply next year. We were pretty confident you'll get the scholarship. I said, that's that's not what deferment means. <laughs> and some, deferment. Some, that's not a deferment. <laughs> so my right. dad said, hey, you know, your brother is a year younger. If he gets into UM's business school as well for his MBA and you take the scholarship, we can afford for both of you to attend. At the same time, you can share one house, one car. And oh. you'll still be young when you graduate. You'll be 23. Oh you can still play ball. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's what I did. I took the scholarship, free money, and that's stupid. And and started there. And our first business launched that semester. This is fall 2001, thanks to University yeah. Business School. I heard about that. Um, was that um, the real vibes? Yes. So, yeah. so the company okay. itself was actually called Random Media LLC and the website was realvibes.net, which became right. a website with the largest Caribbean music videos on the web. We launched yeah. that February 1st, 2002. We taught ourselves to wow. code, video, code websites and code videos streaming at 300k all the way down to 56k. So it was fun, an incredible journey. Now, um, you are the founder, chairman and CEO of your company, Blue Maho. Capital Partners, Inc., which is a private investment firm. You also hold positions as director, chairman, and board member with several other entities, right? Yes. Okay, yes. and I'm sure our audience <laughs> yeah. will be happy to look you up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> now, we, can, we, we can get into some of them during the conversation as well. I think it's important okay. that people give back and not just focus on their own narrow uh, field that they're in. 
Right. Well, now I'd like to specifically talk about Blue Maho. Tell us how did it come to be? And um, are you still considered an emerging market? Well, well, so so what they consider emerging market or frontier market is where you invest. So, for example, okay. Vietnam is considered an emerging market. Jamaica could okay. either be emerging or a frontier market. We okay. could be considered an emerging business company. So, so that's a different classification. But yes, we will still. Okay, for now, I think, I think it's up to like five billion. It's going to be tiny. We're we, we're good. But I want to make sure we clarify. We have Bloomaho Capital Partners Inc., which will slowly go away. We have. Bloomaho Holdings Inc., which is the parent vehicle that I manage. And then we have Bloomaho Capital Inc., which is a special purpose vehicle that's going public. So these are all separate legal right. entities. And I am more focused on holdings and capital inc. Capital partners assets will will dissolve and move into various vehicles as needed going forward. And we'll get into that, but the idea was 10 years ago, the Jamaica Stock Exchange had asked me to present at their annual conference. This is January 2014. And the topic I was to speak on is how do we get the diaspora to invest back into Jamaica? Not just say more remittances or yeah. you know, more donations. And so I said, well, here are the things that you have to do to get someone like me to invest back into Jamaica. And I don't think it's unique to Jamaica. As long as it's a developing country, it won't matter. It could be Brazil, Botswana, Jamaica, or Vietnam, Malaysia. It's the same five things that we care about. Number one is, is corruption. And that's a big issue. So there's, there's a trust deficit. And yes. I presented that idea to them. Here are the things that you need to do to get me comfortable wow. investing. And, and then nobody did it. The largest investment banks, the largest investors, some of the wealthiest people in that room, and four years later, Joe Matalon from ICD Group says to me, mm -hmm. hey, David, by the way, we're discussing doing a deal with you to invest in something in the US, but whatever happened to that idea you pitched us at the stock exchange conference? And I said, that, that, that was for you guys to launch. People like you should launch that. I was telling you what to do. Like, no, 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 you should launch it. You've worked in finance in Jamaica. Yes. You've worked in finance in the US. You're here all the time. We know you, we trust you, we support you. So that's how we came up with the name Blue Moho Capital, is, is Jamaica's right. national tree. But it's also right. a tree that grows elsewhere in the Caribbean. It is, it is not endemic to Jamaica. You can find it right. in Antigua, for example. Yeah. So the idea is that investing is like planting a tree. It takes a very long time to grow and then to bear. And so we right. wanted right. to get people to think long term. I'm a Warren Buffett disciple, so long term yeah. when you invest. And of course, it so happens that the Blue Maho is a fast-growing hardwood tree. So we wanted to be a oh, okay. company that grew okay. very quickly, but was here for the long term. Right. But the idea being, how can we be a conduit for capital that wants to come back home? That's literally what it is. A diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora wants to invest back in their various home countries. But yeah. there is no easy way. There's nothing that is publicly traded that they can put money into that they can trust so they know this trust. Is legitimate yes. that's, number one. that's regulated so yeah. they don't never sue somebody they're suing them in america or canada or yes. the US, right these you know, systems that justice systems that are efficient right? the caribbean has good justice systems but they run an island yeah. time yes so regulated and then lastly liquid they want liquidity they don't want to have to call someone and say hey we need my money back the car crash or something that's the last thing you want to do, right? Private equity funds and venture capital funds holding money for 10 years. That's why it's for accredited investors. And it's private. Those people can afford to sit on that money for 10 years. The majority of us in the diaspora are mm -hmm. regular people, retail investors. Yeah. So how the mom and pop investors are going to invest? How is this grandmother going to buy shares in some company for her grandchild? As a Christmas yeah. present, I say, you know, own a piece of Barbados or Jamaica or Bahamas. Look how mm. this is investing. Look at what is done. So we get to be, uh, at this point, the first ones doing that. And it is fun. That's the only word I can use. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun to teach people about financial literacy, to teach them about yeah. generational wealth creation. Mm -hmm. And we're doing good at the same time. We're going to help improve you know, the way that people live, improve what people earn, and we can actually be transformational investors. And then it's patient capital. The diaspora, don't just grab the money and run when the first hurricane comes. <laughs> okay, so you also have international investors as well, right? That you are soliciting? 
Yes, so we have. So, so the nice thing, we, we got our SEC qualification two weeks ago yeah. for Bloomerho Capital Inc. that allows us to raise up to 5 million US at $10 a share. And we've set the minimum at a 500 US dollar minimum. And this is up to any US person. So, right. person with social security number, tax identification number, or if they have an entity, you have an EIN, an employee identification number. Right. So you can invest. And that's only across the 50 US states that we're authorized. To raise, we'll scale that eventually and then list it on NASDAQ. And then anybody in the world can invest. We've had some people invest privately, though. As you know, if you're a private yeah. company, think Amazon, for example. They yeah. were able to raise money from friends and family. Anybody could put in privately. And so we've had yeah. some money we've raised over the last few years into Bloom or Ho itself, right? Capital Partners Inc. and Holdings, which launched this special purpose vehicle that's going public. So we're excited yeah. to... Uh, give access to, to the wide range of people. We've had people invest from Jamaica, from Bahamas, from Cayman, and from Barbados. Obviously, we've had US and Canada as well. And once so, you're publicly traded, anybody can buy the shares. What are they investing in? The infrastructure, sorry, sorry. housing? Um... Ooh, I love that question. Put it this way. <laughs> in my opinion, when you look at how economies grow, just look at any developing country, look at the four Asian tigers, so Singapore, for example, or you look at Ireland, the Celtic tiger, you look at Rwanda and Botswana, you That's look true. at Brazil. Anytime yeah. per capita income is increasing and an economy is expanding, the same industries are going to grow. So if somebody graduates from college and goes into the working world, they need to you know, get into financial services. They need to open bank accounts, credit cards, investment accounts. They're yeah. going to get insurance, a mortgage. Yeah. So financial yeah. services will always grow two to three times faster than yeah. the economic growth rate, the GDP growth rate. So mm -hmm. we see a huge opportunity in financial services. We look at outsourced services. We have a highly educated population in the Caribbean. You think about Barbados where tertiary education is free. So highly educated companies like Gildan already outsource the majority of their work. They're, most of their staff, their white collar staff is actually in Barbados. So you don't have to just do the basic call centers. We think there's more to move up the valley chain. So outsource services, nearshoring, huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. And of course, with housing though, as people have families, then they need to move, they need to upgrade. So yeah. climate resilient housing is in the region is needed. Okay. You look at energy. Again, people are going to use more energy as they have more money. Well, then we are islands for the most part in the region. So how do you solve that problem? in a green way or a renewable way. So we see huge opportunity around energy. Infrastructure always grows. We need more roads and bridges and sewer systems. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, that's an automatic one, that's given. Education, we're going to need more schools. We need to improve healthcare systems. So it's investing across the entire economy, yeah. across the region. There's no single one that we feel is the only one to do. We think that we should look at all of the above. Do we have the right partners? Do we have the right government frame of reference and the right support? I don't need the government to give us money, but is their plan to us sensible? Is it stable yeah. politically? Uh, we look at the dollar. Is, is their currency stable? That matters to us. Yes. And then, of course, we want to see what the return looks like. And then we go from there. We are starting with affordable housing and private credit. So we can build houses in Jamaica and Barbados to start. And we see a huge opportunity there in Blumaho Capital uh, doing this. And then we also want to do private credit, which is lending money. And so small yeah. and medium-sized businesses need capital to grow, right? Money is a lifeblood of a business, it's oxygen. Uh, in the region, as we already know, is, is it's really hard for small and medium-sized business to get capital. When they do, is is extremely expensive. We have the opportunity to tap the diaspora for cheaper capital, and we can bring that to the region, and then unlend that through the right partners who are regulated in their individual countries, and we can help to uplift economies just that way. And we okay, think it's so a huge opportunity. Let me ask you, what is what would be your pitch, right, to encourage, you know, regular individuals like myself to invest in Jamaica you know what how do we start what do we start with you're you, you're the conduit as you say the middleman between you know <laughs> right well I don't I don't think I was as a middleman right because I think middlemen tend to be all right you want to invest in this specific thing and come through me and we set up an account but you get to choose what you put the money in and then we have to right. teach you about the individual stocks or up a, 
that's not what I want to do. I, I want to be Warren Buffett. You don't tell Warren Buffett what to invest in. You buy shares in his company and you hang on for their life for the next 20 okay. years. <laughs> because he has the team that knows what to invest in. So that's our thing. Like we are investing in the Caribbean. We're investing for no matter us. What, right? Yeah. We can take money from rich people right now with no problem. We do not have to take this company public. And we will do a fabulous job making money for our wealthy investors. Why not hitch a ride with a billionaire? This is Michael Leach in our case, being one of our key advisors. Mm -hmm. Carpooling with billionaires is the smartest way to create wealth. Yeah. So carpool with us. We, right, <laughs> okay. we don't have to take it public. We don't have to give access to retail investors. We're going to invest anyway. You might as well jump in because you get to jump in. And it's liquid. And if you don't like what we do, you need to just sell the shares. It's regulated. So you don't have to wonder what we do with the money. We have to do quarterly reports. We have an annual general meeting that you're going to come to in person. Can ask questions. One share, one vote. You can vote for or against things that we want to do. And if you have a problem, you just sell it. It's liquid. To me, yeah. that is the single best thing. It so happens that you will learn about investing because we are so transparent about what we're yeah. doing. We want to educate people as well. So in my opinion, why not? We spend $500 on a round trip ticket. You should spend $500 to possibly learn. And it's not even spending. Yeah. It's investing the 500 Investing, yeah. yeah. What's the worst? Well, I've can... learned a lot uh, just reading about you. So. <laughs> now, um, you have a vision for Jamaica, right? And I understand that you have a vision for the North Coast. You already have... Um, Celebrity investors, right? Well, I don't want. <laughs> I want to be very to... careful. All right. So I, I, I have a vision for everywhere you invest. I have a big vision for Jamaica. The deal you're probably talking about in Jamaica is a Kaylee Group Limited investment. Okay. So Kingston Live Entertainment, Kaylee Group, is a publicly traded company in Jamaica and the Junior Stock Exchange. And you say in Bolt, mm -hmm. the is a sixth larger shareholder. This is a company that owns forty nine percent of. The vehicle that was Usain Bolt's tracks and records, his restaurant in Kingston and Montego Bay. We want to help them franchise that here into the U.S. market specifically. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. But they also have a property that's called Besso that partner with Sajikor, the big life insurance okay. company, yeah. to build this really nice property. I mean, we're talking north of 70 condos and 14 villas, only two villas left at this point. So we became the 10th largest shareholder through Blumaho Holdings and Blumaho Capital Partners okay. in that vehicle. And so we're excited for them to, to finally show it to the public later this summer and mm -hmm. allow people around the world to come and really see Jamaica in a different way. It's right beside James Bond Beach. So there's a river going through the property, two pools, okay. including an infinity pool and a beach. Wow. Amazing, amazing property. Wow. But now what about this Tiger Woods golf course? So I... this is this is out in, in Trelawney. This is a deal that's done. It's not us. We we we're supporting it and we'll invest in it. But man, this is this is probably 14 or more years ago this was announced, you know, and it just it, it's taking that long. It's just okay. All right. right. But this this is a group here in the US, the Nexus collection, and uh, mm -hmm. they have done Isleworth, they did property. Well, they did late no one here in Orlando. I live in Orlando. So Isleworth is in Orlando, where Tiger was used to live, is one of the okay. nicest golf courses in the world. And they built Lake known as well. So they took 10,000 acres of cow pasture land and turned it into a futuristic city. Incredible what they built over there. And they did yeah. Albany out in Bahamas. This is in oh, Nassau. Okay. Really amazing with a marina. And they have a, a studio there as well, a music studio that's owned by Justin Timberlake and Shakira. I've been okay. able to, to visit there and play yeah. on that golf course. They want Jamaica to become their flagship property. So to the four that oh. were in they want Jamaica to be the flagship. Nice. This is going to be Jamaica's first casino. So you think about what you have in the Bahamas or Vegas. Yeah. They wanted that in Jamaica. And then they're going to have, a, it's called the T-Squared Social Club. There's one in New York. I believe it's near Grand Central Terminal. And this is Tiger Woods and Justin Timberlake. That's why it's T-Squared. Really nice venue <laughs> with, you know, essentially with, with virtual reality games in there as well, but it's a bar and restaurant. They want to do that on the property. You'll have the casino. I think they're looking at about 4,000 rooms. It's, it's going to be huge. It's a massive wow. property, 4,400 employees. 
mostly local and locally trained. And he's going to have the, the family-friendly side of the, the hotel and then the 18 and over side uh, for the gambling and the T-squared social. And then one of the only Tiger Woods designed golf courses in the entire Caribbean. And what they've said is that oh. one year one year after breaking ground, they want to then list some of it. So regular retail investors will be able to buy into the property. And then being a shareholder would give you special access to the property. Oh, I love that idea, but this is a 1.1 billion US dollar investment that they have signed off on in Jamaica, and it would be wow. truly transformational. So, how many years out before we see that? <laughs> but yeah, see, I'm not a real estate developer. I would think that it's going to take at least three <laughs> years to to build it, right? okay. a year to lay the ground and the foundation. You do the landscaping, and then. Another two years to build something like that. That's yeah. that's what I would think. So it is going to take a little while, but it is going to help put Jamaica on the map in a way that we've never been. I mean, think about this. Every single James Bond book was written in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. so you think about Casino yeah. Royal, which is, is yeah. gambling. I mean, James Bond is literally known as a poker player. So you yeah. would come to Jamaica, you would visit some of the locations where they shot some of the movies. Dr. No was filmed in Jamaica, Live and Let yeah. Die. No time to die. So you got three movies at least that, yeah. that had significant scenes in Jamaica. The House Firefly and Golden Eye, they're in Jamaica. Yeah. You can visit James Bond Beach where they can't gamble in Jamaica like James Bond. <laughs> what happens when they can finally do that? I think that's going to be yes. people are going to be like, oh man, I need to I need to do a casino royal theme party. It's going to be Oh, we might become the gambling capital of the world. Who knows? Bah Bahamas <laughs> might not want to hear that. Yeah, that I know. <laughs> I know. Now, you know what you mentioned before about the trust factor, right? Yes. And um, I hate to bring this up, but you remember Olind? Yeah, bring it up. Don't hate. I bring up. I bring it up. Right. When I got to really? the five things, the number three, I said, here's one of the most important things. It has to be partnered with a financial institution in the region, yeah. known outside the region, because we need to avoid Bernie Madoff, Alan Stanford, Olin, and Cash Plus. <laughs> Bert, yeah, yeah. We need, and, and people over on the Trinidad and Barbados side are going to talk about Clico. We have yeah. to be honest and talk about these things. I, I worked in finance. I had people come to me and ask me, do you think these returns can work with Olin? They, do they make sense? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. They still went oh. to put their money in there. Yes, anyway. Really? Okay. The numbers made no sense. To me, it's greed. If somebody promises you a guaranteed return every single month of something like 3%, 5%, 10%, that's crazy. Okay. It is unsustainable. It is possible to do it in one month or three months, but you have to have a dull month at some point. Otherwise, they're not being transparent. So having studied those and studied others to understand what went wrong, and yeah. how on earth were they able to take people's hard-earned money? And these are not oh retail investors that went into Olin. These are doctors and lawyers it's, and bankers who put money in there. Who well, people so should a, know better. <laughs> people who should know better, but greed <laughs> and then creating fear of missing out. No, you can't get in anymore. You have to get in through your friend. That veneer <laughs> is what gets people to put money in there. Like, guys, that's right. not everybody. I, I'm trying to do the 15% a year. I am the get rich slow Warren Buffett. Yeah. Guy. No interest. I'm sorry. And I can't guarantee anything unless I've issued a bond and the bond will pay you seven and a half percent. That's different. That's a guaranteed debt. And that's a reasonable number. Seven and a half percent for a year. Those numbers make sense. Up to 15%. I can see that. Above yeah. that number, I am a little concerned to be honest. <laughs> it, it, so that's my oh the, the number should the, the number should be a red flag immediately. The number should be a red yeah. flag. Yeah. Do you think so, Olin? Do you think he he started this business with the intention to no. you know defraud people? No, no. You really I, having to... watched enough episodes of American Greed on CNBC, almost <laughs> nobody, including Bernie Madoff, almost no one ever starts off wanting to defraud people. What happens is that they get into a little trouble, and instead of just admitting to the people, "Hey, I lost some of your money, or I didn't hit the numbers I was expecting to hit," here's what happened: they try and cover it up, so they take money from Peter. To pay well, for to pay for <laughs> and they yeah. don't get caught. Okay. And because they don't get caught, no man, I'll make it up later. I'll fix it. But then it well, never gets fixed. And because but you eventually get way, caught. <laughs> well, you all if you do, if you're doing it wrong, you will always get caught. Yes. It just it just it's much true. catch up with you. It just that's just yeah. how life is. Karma is a right. So that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will get caught. So just just do the right thing and be honest. Tell the people, yeah. hey. 
this is where it go. But that is also why hedge funds don't make promises like that. I used to work for a hedge fund. And we would say, here's our target return for the year. And we send in a quarterly update with a hedge fund. And the hedge fund charges a fee. They charge you 2% of the money they're managing. So that's how yeah. hedge funds, private equity funds, VC funds work. 2% of the assets under management. Mm -hmm. And then they charge 20% of the upside. So it's called 2 and 20. However, okay. typically they give you a hurdle rate. So they'll say, hey, my hurdle rate is 8%. So the first 8% on your money, that's all yours. Anything above 8%, though, I keep 20 and you keep 80. So you feel that okay. you have a downside protection of 8. I'll get 8. Anything these guys do above 8% per year, you keep 80% as the okay. investor and the man managing it or the woman managing it keeps 20. No, they have a number they want to beat. Nobody wants to only get 8% then. But if that's what the richest people invest in and expect, why would anybody talk about a guaranteed 15% or a guaranteed 5% a month? That, to me, that's insane. It's insane. And I will never make it, those you know, yeah. Investing is always recommended, right? And, yes, um, yes. you know, and I agree with it. But you know what I hate? When there are some months, you know, you see that you gain and you're happy. And then some months when, you know, you've lost and you feel like you're just gambling with your money. It might turn out that you eventually lose most of it. Anyway. But, but that's why there are a few rules related to investing. So think about you know, Michael Leachin's five laws of wealth creation. And this is what he gained from studying Warren Buffett, right? He wanted to go into investing. So he studied the best investor in history, Warren Buffett. So he says, think of a wealthy person who created wealth, not inherited it, yeah. not stole it, created the wealth. So if you think of that wealthy person, it's probably a billionaire, it's five things. Number one, that person owned a few businesses, sometimes just one, but a few businesses mm -hmm. that they understood. So number one, a few businesses. Number two, they understood that business and how it made money. Number three, the business was domiciled in strong long-term growth industries. Number four, that business prudently managed OPM, other people's money, whether it's investors' okay. money, borrowed money, debt, or customers' money. That's other people's money. And then yeah. fifth and final, they held for the long term. So whether okay. this is Steve Jobs and Apple or Oprah Winfrey, Jeff Bezos and Amazon, Warren Buffett and Berkshire, those are the five laws. Most of us don't learn this stuff. We don't discuss investing our own or tables. Most of us are middle class or working class. Our families never talked about investing because they don't know that. So it means that you have to think long term. You're holding for 10 years or more. So you're not looking yeah. at it every month. But if you think about it this way, you buy a house. Do you look on Zillow every single month? Do you get a evaluation every month for your house to see if it's up or down? No. No. It's the, same once thing a year. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, you shouldn't even do that once a year. But it's the same no. thing. Stocks. <laughs> It's the same thing. You bought into the business. I don't care about what it is every day or every week or every month. I didn't buy it for one year or for one week or one month. So for the care. long term. I'm here for the long term. What is it going to look like 10 years from now? If you okay. had held NVIDIA for the last 10 years, you'd be great. Basically, almost any company that you had bought that was domiciled in a strong long-term growth industry and held for 10 years, you're good. So just focus on the long term. I guess term. Blue, chip, blue chip stocks are probably the safest i guess but blue chip is always the safest that's where the least growth is going to come from amazon going mm -hmm. public is not a blue chip company but you buy amazon and you hold it because it was domiciled in a strong long-term growth industry okay. apple was in a long-term growth industry it still is in a strong long-term growth industry coca-cola is not going anywhere tomorrow in 10 years <laughs> from now we're still drinking coca-cola yeah. so so there are companies we can buy into that we know and we don't do it and in most cases, there's this thing called dollar cost averaging. Decide how much you're going to invest every month. You set aside that. And every month, you go and invest in the same companies. So every month, whether it's up or down, you're buying. And so you have you to stay loyal, to more or less. That's too. the idea. As long as the business continues to be a high-quality business, you should own it. That's it. As long <laughs> as it stays high-quality, own it. Now, now, you know, I've heard several times that the Jamaica Stock Exchange is the world's best performing stock market. That's unbelievable. 
Well, it was for five years up to 2019. It was okay. the best performing stock exchange in the whole world in US dollar terms. It was Jamaica, Vietnam, and then the US stock market. Really? It is unbelievable to some extent, but then it's believable when you understand what causes that. So let's think about what okay. causes a stock exchange to do well, right? If you are in a country that has a problem, a, example, a balance of payments problem, we worry the country is going to fail and the IMF comes in and says, hey, we're going to give you some money and help you fix it. Here are the rules you need to follow. We then go and fix all those things and say we're going to bring our debt to GDP ratio down in 2012 from 144%, and we're going to go all the way down to 60. The dollar is now suddenly stable. The country is now generating a primary surplus. We have ample US dollars. You know what that means? The businesses that are thinking long-term, they say, oh man, things about the block. People actually going to have money to spend again. Consumers can do stuff. I yeah. can get US dollars to invest in my research and development and, re and expand. So then 2012 kicks off this boom of companies listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, raising capital. So I get to come in as an early stage company. These people went and bought the stock. Over the next five years, those companies are starting to generate even more profits. The stock of the company eventually follows the performance of the company. So if the company is now doing well and telling me, oh man, our, our, our profits are up 30% last year. Oh yeah, you know what the price is going to do? eventually go up 30%. Right. So these companies are now <laughs> growing like crazy. So the stock yeah. price starts going like crazy. And so that is literally what it was. Jamaica went from being bad neighborhood to being good <laughs> neighborhood. And now it's a case study. It's the opposite of Greece. It's a case study for how you do an IMF deal, come out on the other side, a better country. Barbados is following the exact same path as Jamaica right now. Really? Okay. Same path. Yeah. One of the Caribbean tigers, right? One of the Caribbean. So I hope I hope you're learning a lot more about investing yeah. in economics now that I because you actually know this, you just nobody's explained it to you in simple terms before. You know what? I still need a le a good lesson. You know, you have to constantly feed me. Yeah. I, I but that's good. We are lifelong learners, so I'm happy to constantly feed you. We can do it offline. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Well, um, I think we've covered everything except that I'd like you to tell our viewers how and how much they can start out with, right? If they wanted to invest, that. just tell us to us, talk to us, just give us it in layman terms. As I will say. give you in layman's terms and I always have to give this disclosure first, right? Anytime you invest, you can lose all your money. Investing <laughs> involves a risk of loss. If you buy Apple shares, you could lose all your money in Apple shares. Yeah. So we, we are no different. You know, Blue Moho Capital Inc. is focused on investing back into the Caribbean and giving you, the average person, access to the opportunities to make money as well right. as to contribute to economic development in the region back home. Okay. So it's $10 US per share, $500 minimum investment, and it's open to any US person. You just have to go okay. to www.islandforward.com. You can okay. see the information there. It's being done as a Reg CF, Regulation Crowdfunding, under the Jobs Act that was passed under President Obama and Vice President Biden in 2020. Okay. So it is an offering that we are allowed to generate solicit. That's why I can tell you this. Normally, you can't do that. We got our SEC qualification uh, two weeks ago. So we are allowed to generate solicit, which means advertise. And anybody who is a U.S. person can buy today. Our goal is to direct list the company onto NASDAQ before the end of this year. So that means that it's liquid by the end of this year. It shows up in your Schwab bank account, well, your Schwab investment account or your Chase investment account. That's the goal. And now you own shares, just like you'd own shares in Apple, you own shares in Blue Moho that will pay you dividends, right? As we generate profits, it pays out dividends quarterly to our shareholders. We can reinvest the rest and scale what we do. And we start by investing in affordable houses in the Caribbean, Jamaica, and Barbados first. But we can do a lot more after we go public. Now, is there, okay, I know everything is digital nowadays, right? But yes. I like to talk to, you know, someone one-on-one. -on -one. Is there going to be a representative such as yourself or, you know? Yeah, well, so we have a 1-800 number. When you go to the website, you'll see it. Uh, yeah. We currently have a head of investor relations. We have an investor relations specialist for retail investors. We have one person now. Yeah. The goal is to to hire some more, and I, in an ideal world, 
This costs money though. Hiring people costs money. That's money I can't to invest. Talk, to talk to someone, right? I would like to invest as much as possible, but the goal is to eventually have rep offices in, in, in the biggest area. So we want to have something already. We're looking at Miramar next. We have an office in Brickle. Nobody's coming to our office in Brickle. <laughs> in <laughs> Miami. We want an office in Miramar. We're going to open an Broward, office. Broward, yeah. Yeah, so Broward County, uh, we'll open an office in Atlanta, Georgia, and we'll open an office in New York to cover the, the Northeast USA. So that's the plan yeah. over the okay. next year. So that, yes, they yeah. can actually come in and, and talk to a person. And I think that, unfortunately, that yeah. is just is, is a high touch thing when you deal with retail investors until we educate them to a certain level. Yeah. But it means that we can also go and do financial literacy seminars within the community. We can send somebody in. That would be a great idea. Um, to, yeah, I not even to invest with us. Just, hey, guys, let's let's explain what we are doing. Here's how we yeah, look yeah. at investing. Here's what we have learned. Here's how it works. Here's the books. And here's what you need to go and do. Yeah, Whether or not you ever give us a dollar. Right. And, and that's if we can help to uplift people that look like us, that's yeah. our we. If they invest yeah. in our shares, then great. But let's at least get them to first talk about money and invest yes. for the long term. I absolutely agree. <laughs> well, David Mullings, um, you know what? You mentioned a few um, abbreviations, I should say, but I learned some like FDI. Right. Foreign Direct, foreign direct Investment. investment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> AUM. Yep. Assets Under Management. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. So um so it's very nice talking with you. I hope we can meet again. And, we will. Um, we yes. will. Hope hope Towards it's not end a of the year? Well, yeah, we meet before go. the end of the year. No, no, we yeah, can't okay. wait that long. We're going public before that. We need to meet before we go public. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, uh, thank you. And I know our viewers um we're happy, you know, we'll be happy to uh see this interview. And thank uh, you for making hopefully it. Hopefully. Yes, so it's bloomaholecapital.com, right? Yeah, bloomaholecapital.com and islandforward.com. Islandforward.com, okay. Thank you so much, David. Thank you very much, and keep doing what Take you're care. doing. Thank you, and you too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>